Barcelona v Real Madrid. Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo no longer focal point of El Clasico. Times are changing in La Liga and it means the two best players in the world are no longer the main billing in El Clasico. On the surface, it looks identical. The wide scanning shot of now camp, rainy and great, the kaleidoscopic twirls through past moments and present players, the rumble, the roar, la passion. This, undoubtedly, is El Clasico. Barcelona meeting rate El Madrid does not need shilling to the general public. Lucky, really, given the hackneyed depiction satellite viewers are subjected to in the week leading up to the game. It is the world's biggest football match, it hardly requires ride of the Valkyries on the castanets. But behind the slow motion cutscenes and Hollywood dramatization on British television is a change over in Spain, if only a short-term one. After nine games played, a quarter of the season, Normality has usually been restored after early season fairy tales and anomalies. But Atletico Madrid, under the tutelage of the irascible, ingenious Argentine Diego Simeone, have won eight of their nine games, until the weekend's defeat to Espanyol, at least he looked less like an anomaly and more like title challengers. Maybe they still will. Barcelona vs. Real Madrid is about culture, history and politics, yes, but it is predominantly about the football for nearly a decade, it has been about the best two sides in Spain seeking advantage in a routine titled race. It is about Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, the two best players in the world, providing another 90-minute plea for supremacy with the world's most mesmerizing PowerPoint presentation. The joust between Messi and Ronaldo usually dominates coverage. It is the axis on which the entire show hinges upon. But there has been little talk of the duo this time. In one press conference, Ronaldo spoke of Gareth Bale, the hundred now becoming the hunter, for Messi, no words, just a tentative goal-scoring return in Milan. They are still the world's best, but there is now a chink in the glass ceiling, one that Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Frank Ribery and others continue to kick at stud first. Evidence comes with Ribery, consistent, industrious, magnificent, being voted as Europe's Player of the Year by UEFA. Evidence is reaffirmed with discussions this week regarding the Ballon d'Or and of how the Frenchman, or the sumptuous Swede, or even full-back Philippe Lom, should be in contention. This meeting between Spain's titans comes when neither player is particularly embedded in our consciences, or perhaps too embedded for anybody to realize. The perception is that both have had fairly unspectacular starts to the season, mirroring their club's beginnings under new management. No real moments of magic. No goals that intoxicate with a cocktail of disbelief and respect. Statistics say otherwise. Messi has scored 12 goals in 11 games and Ronaldo 15 in 12. Messi's hat trick at Valencia was superb, as was his 96th minute dash into the box against Sevilla to turn one point into three. Ronaldo has scored two last-minute winners for Real and already scored seven goals in Europe. But still the sobering continues. Has the story run its course? maybe even become boring? How many times can you read beautiful poetry before there's no more tears to shed? How many times can you be punched in the face with brute strength before it stops hurting? It does not help that teammates now impede on their spotlight. The club spent almost pounds 150m on Bale and Neymar this summer to complement their main attractions. That is not to claim Barca or Real have ever been one-man teams but there was a quiet dignity and professionalism about Zabi, Andre Siniesta, Zabi Alonso and Angel Di Maria. Bale and Neymar stand out with their fancy feet, fearsome hairstyles and trademarked celebrations. They are pixelated legends already. Messi and Ronaldo are natural rivals with their obvious dichotomies. Lamentable as it is, conflict sells football matches and creates the aura of celebrity around them. Messi's good fear and Aldo's evil. The fanness and humility of the Argentine v the power and arrogance of the Portuguese, Barcelona v Real Madrid. In the two-team, two-player league, that narrative is essential. But there is now Atletico. Granted, they were in a similar position last year, but they appear better equipped to sustain something. There is now Bale and Neymar, and even Diego Costa of Atletico, who has been playing so well that both Brazil and Spain want his bowl like busy and mentality for the World Cup. There are also other storylines to follow, mostly about how Gerardo Martino and Carlo Ancelotti perform in their new roles. Uncertainty still surrounds both coaches, even in October. Under Martino, 
the disciples of Marcelo Bielsa, Barcelona have won three of their games by a solitary goal, for Real, Ancelotti has provided for one goal wins. Last season, they won by one goal eight and ten times respectively. It is proof of the gap closing in Spain and of changing times perhaps, or maybe it is evidence that the impact of Messi and Ronaldo is not as great as it once was. Most definitely it serves as a realization, the harsh reality check even, that Barcelona and Real no longer need help from the pair because both teams are now imperfect and flawed, and that generates as much interest as anything. Messi and Ronaldo are still special, phenomenons even, the subject of reminiscences over the next half century. But they are no longer alone. Confirmation, you suspect, will come when the Ballon d'Or is announced in January.